Hi everybody, today we're talking about our first visit to Cinque Terre in Italy, five scenic villages located on the rugged Ligurian coast that have been made a national park to preserve their feel as fishing villages and are locked in time. Our plan was to come into Rio Maggiore, the southernmost village, by train in the evening and spend a couple of days just seeing the sights, exploring some of the towns, and enjoying the local food and wine. We also wanted to stroll the Via della More, the easy scenic coastal trail that runs between Rio Maggiore and its northern neighbor, the village of Monarola. Other ways we could have explored Cinque Terre were by driving some of the winding roads and parking in the hills high above the villages, or take a ferry boat from down south in La Spezia. Since the trains run regularly and stop conveniently in each village, we figured it was the best way to go. Our visit was in the middle of October, hoping to avoid the infamous throngs of summer, but to still be there while the ferry boats were operating between the towns before they shut down from November through March. We planned to stay at Creuza de Ma on the coastal outskirts of Rio Maggiore. It only has four rooms, and we especially liked that it had four separate observation decks, so the occupants of each of the four rooms could enjoy a private, tranquil place to take in the beauty of the coast. It also had another deck with a hot tub, which was perfect for soaking away the aches and pains from hiking the hilly terrain. We arrived by train to Rio Maggiore, where we were met by Caruza de Ma employee Christy, who, with a friend, carried our larger bags and guided us through the winding cobblestone streets of Rio Maggiore to our hotel. As we approached the hotel, we saw the two and a half flights of stairs to our room. On our arrival evening, the owner of our lodging, David, made reservations for us at Rio Maggiore's finest restaurant, Dauchila. Sitting on the patio overlooking the fishing boats and the small harbor was the perfect way to slow down to the pace of this magical village. The following morning, after enjoying coffee we brewed in our room and sipped on one of Creuza de Ma's decks, we grabbed a quick bite to eat right at the foot of the stairs of our lodging. It also overlooked the ocean and had fantastic views of Rio Maggiore's quaint harbor. After breakfast, we headed out to explore our village. We walked up the central path heading up to the village's watchtower. We passed restaurants, bakeries, small food stores, and several souvenir stores, each topped by homes of locals mixed in with places with rooms to rent. We watched as locals were buying groceries and baked goods, and as the town slowly woke up, we really felt at home. When we reached the village watchtower, we were greeted by a local named Andre. He was happy to meet and greet the lady tourist in his sweet but ultimately lecherous and handsy way. Ah, Italy. The views from the tower were stunning, but we quickly found that no matter where you looked, the views were breathtaking. Picturesque isn't a strong enough word for Rio Maggiore or Cinque Terre in general. After taking in the scenery, we tried to blend in as locals. As we headed back down to the center of Rio Maggiore, we went to the train station where the National Park Office was located. To hike the trails, you need to get a permit. When we asked about the Via del Amore, we were brusquely told that it was closed for renovation and repair. It was obvious that they must be getting this question a bit too often, which makes sense seeing how it's a major attraction in the area. Always check the status of trails before obtaining permits. Since we could not go on the walk, we decided to visit the village beach just outside of the harbor area, past the ferry landing. It was a rocky beach framed by the truss structures of the train tunnels. The water was crystal clear and our friend, who's an avid scuba diver, even brought his mask to see the sights beneath the surface. While the water clarity was good, the amount of sea life was minimal. Who would have guessed that millennia of fishing along a smallish coastal bay had taken its toll? After the beach, we retreated to the hot tub before enjoying a nice afternoon bottle of local wine on the northern observation deck of the Cariuza de Ma. It was the perfect first day, and we were looking forward to strolling down the stairs and taking the short walk to our dinner at Rio Bistro, just across the path from Dao Chila to enjoy their local tasting menu. The menu seemed to have an overabundance of anchovy-based dishes. We enjoyed some oddly familiar wine, and while the dishes were far better than we had anticipated, we did affirm that we weren't the biggest fans of anchovy-based dishes. On our second day, we decided to visit a couple of other villages. First, we took the train to Vernazza, what many travel gurus describe as their favorite village. Most of the other villages, including Rio Maggiore, have rugged terrain, steep climbs, and numerous stairs, which can be a bit of a challenge for anyone who isn't used to that. In comparison, Vernazza is relatively flat, offering a perfect shopping and dining lane along the large, flat harbor area. The crowds confirmed this was a popular destination. As ferry boats and trains entered the village, the hordes just increased. We retreated up the stairs to the watchtower and found wonderful views up to Monte Rosso del Mare, the northernmost village, and south to the other three villages. Here we could find a peaceful break from all the visitors. 
After coming back down into town, we stopped for lunch at the Gambero Rosso in the Harbor Square, where we sampled the seafood salad. It wasn't what we expected in that we got some parsley and tomatoes mixed with lobster, prawn, mussel, and fish. The salad part was not very well represented. However, the abundance of fresh seafood was delicious and certainly something we would order again. Afterwards, we caught the train to Monterola, the village next to our base in Rio Maggiore. This was decidedly more sloped than Renazza, so it had fewer visitors. Its main differentiating feature for visitors was a short walk to the village vista, where you can take in one of the most iconic views of all of Cinque Terre. As weather was starting to roll in, we decided to board the ferry back to Rio Maggiore. It's a great way to get a view of the local countryside and a fun way to go back from village to village. We were glad we were able to ride it before it shut down in winter. When we landed on the Rio Maggiore ferry stop, we quickly climbed the stairs to Carrizza de Ma, changed into our bathing suits and headed to the hot tub to once again relax and take in the fantastic view. We sat in the hot tub as it began to drizzle, sipped local limoncello while watching the ferries and fishing boats move around the scenic national park. Truly one of the most memorable moments of our trip. We couldn't help wishing we had allotted more time to this tranquil world of its own. Our lodging at Caruza de Ma could not have been more comfortable. Everything was first rate, clean, and the views were everything we could have hoped for. Next time, we'll do more cardio it takes to scale the stairs it takes to go in and out of the place. Wandering the villages evokes impressions of being dropped back in time, while still providing all the conveniences of a modern city. The people were friendly and helpful, sometimes too much so. While the streets could be a bit crowded during the day, because of all the visitors that arrived by train, automobile, and ferry, the evenings are quiet and the streets were tranquil. Cinque Terre is not for everybody. If vigorous walks and climbing steep stairs is a challenge for you, or if you want a modern full-service hotel, raucous nightlife, or prefer chain restaurants, this isn't for you. If you're looking for a place to go for relaxation, great hiking, and wonderfully authentic food in a place that feels like you stepped back in time, then Cinque Terre is ideal. I know we're already planning our next trip. If you have any suggestions for visitors to Cinque Terre or requests on places we should visit and review, please leave them in the comments below. If you like this content and would like to see more, please like and subscribe to this channel for future trip reviews. See you next time.